Howdy. The purpose of this video is to talk about optical properties of materials, and specifically we're going to talk about optical absorption and how optical properties are related back to the electronic band structure of materials. So let's think about a couple different types of materials first of all. First let's think of metals. Metals I tend to think of as reflective but also very opaque. It's difficult to shine light through a metal, right? Let's think about insulators. You could think about diamond, you could think about sapphire, um, you could think about quartz, glass, um, you could think about polymers. In all of these cases, these tend to be very transparent materials. So it's a material that I can shine light through. So what is behind this difference? Why do metals absorb light? And why do insulators uh, tend to be transparent to light? And what about semiconductors? Because they're somewhere in between. So that's what we're going to try and solve uh, in this video. Now, in order to do that, I need to remind you uh, some of the basic properties of light. Now remember, um, every wavelength of light is uh, corresponds to a specific energy. So light travels in quantized packets in photons, uh, and the energy of a photon is uh, inversely proportional to the wavelength, right? So if I have uh, shorter wavelengths, they have higher energy. If I have uh, longer wavelengths, they have less energy. So if I think just about the visible part of the spectrum, uh, violet, blue, these are high energy uh, wavelengths. Red uh, is a low energy wavelength. So right below uh, visible spectrum, I have IR. Right above the visible spectrum, I have UV. Okay, so that's key, right? Because um, we're thinking about how does light interact with matter? Um, and so the, the key fundamental thing I need to think about is what is the energy of this photon coming in? The other thing you need to remember, um, and if you haven't watched the video on electronic band structure, if you don't know what I'm looking at right now, maybe go back and check that out. Um, but the difference between semiconductors, insulators, and metals, right? So semiconductors and insulators both have some band gap. So there's a forbidden energy uh, where I can't have any electrons take that energy. Um, in contrast, metals have a bunch of unoccupied levels immediately above the occupied bands, right? So in semiconductors and insulators, we have our filled valence band and our empty conduction band separated by some gap. In metals, we would have one whole band and it's partially filled. Okay, now let's think about how light will interact in these two cases. First, let's think about the metal case. So we have some light coming in. Now remember, each of these packets of light, each of these photons has some amount of energy. And what does it do? For the light to get absorbed, it has to interact with an electron and kick that electron up to some higher energy level. Now remember, metals, there are all of these unoccupied states immediately above the occupied states. So it's really easy to find different electrons that will absorb into these states. And that's relatively independent of that wavelength of light, right? So if I have long wavelengths, small energies, I can still absorb them. If I have short wavelengths, high energy photons, uh, I can absorb those as well. So metals are absorptive to light because they have all of these potential places that I can kick that energy, that electron, up to, um, allowing it to absorb light at that particular wavelength. Now let's think about insulators, right? Insulators tend to have a very wide band gap. So when that photon comes in, in most cases, that photon has some specific energy and it doesn't have enough energy to excite an electron across that band gap. If the energy of the photon, so energy photon, is less than energy of the band gap, it will not be absorbed, right? And the point is, there's, there's no available energy state for me to excite that electron up to. Because electrons can't exist within the band gap, um, I'm not able to absorb those photons. So most insulators have very large band gaps, and band gaps that are large enough that all of the optical um, frequencies of light do not have enough energy to 
um, excite an electron all the way across that band gap. In other words, the band gap of insulators or of transparent materials is greater than the energy of visible photons. What about semiconductors? So if we have something with a relatively low energy, so let's think about red light, maybe that's not enough energy to kick it up across the whole band gap and get absorbed. However, if I increase the energy, it's possible for me to cross that band gap, right? So the difference between semiconductors and insulators is that now my band gap is smaller, and so I could potentially absorb light at some wavelengths. So there are a couple of different ways to show this. This is one potential, potential way. These are a bunch of different semiconductors, and they all have different band gaps. So the materials with the small band gaps are uh, the ones that we see over here, and larger band gaps are over this way. And so the way to tell that is that in some material, for example, let's look at silicon here. In silicon, um, if I have wavelengths that are greater than about a thousand nanometers, I'm not absorbing much of that light. So these are relatively low energy photons, not enough um, to be absorbed. If I have a wavelength that's higher, so uh, <laughs> sorry, a wavelength that's shorter, which means a higher energy, um, those wavelengths will be absorbed. So silicon will um, strongly absorb throughout most of the visible spectrum. But what if we look at something with lower energy than visible light, so IR radiation? This would tell us that silicon would not absorb strongly in the IR spectrum. And indeed, this is true. So if I take um, a wafer of silicon, these are very shiny. They're very opaque, um, and I can't see it. Through it. So this is an experiment somebody did where he's taking a picture, he's putting it on top of a flashlight, if you're looking in the visible uh, wavelength, then uh, you cannot see through it. He's seeing his own reflection in this case. However, if you switch to an IR mode, so you're only trying to look at light with fairly long wavelengths, some part of that light can come through the silicon, right? So here you can actually see uh, the light bulb inside that flashlight. I think that's kind of an amazing picture. Anyway, the point is that semiconductors can absorb some light, but not others, and what they absorb is a function of what the band gap of that particular semiconductor is. So in review, photons of light are associated with a specific energy. In, or in order to absorb a photon, um, we have to excite an electron from the valence band up to some unoccupied uh, space. So this is easy to do for metals because there are unoccupied orbitals immediately above those occupied orbitals. Um, it's very difficult in insulators, things with large band gaps, at least in the visible part of the spectrum. Semiconductors, uh, it's going to be very wavelength dependent and very dependent on the band gap of that particular semiconductor.